Welcome everybody, this is the second uh, video for the AP Statistics Summer Homework Assignment. Um, hopefully you're, if you've already handled the introduction. This video uh, is going to cover uh, the first half of section 1.1 in our textbook. Um, sections in our textbook are relatively long, so I'm going to split this up into kind of two parts. Um, so this video will cover roughly pages 9 through 16, and then the third video will cover the remaining pages in section 1.1. Uh, so hopefully you remember back from the introduction the difference between categorical data and quantitative data. Again, quantitative data is a number, whereas categorical data is some sort of category, usually a word or something like that. Yeah. And I've actually got some categorical data over here. I've got some fictitious class that has 24 students in it. Um, let's say it's our AP statistics class, although we actually have far fewer than 24 students. Um, and this is actually the language that uh, these Sacred Heart students took as their world language. Okay? Um, many seniors don't take a world language, but this is kind of historically what language they took. Right? Um, so we want to kind of look at kind of what this means. And so what we're going to get into here is different ways to represent categorical data. And I've actually listed kind of seven, really kind of, I guess, eight different ways here. Um, if you want to pause the video and kind of write these down at some point in your notes, um, this video and the next one will be kind of marching through talking about what, what all these mean. Okay? Um, so the first thing actually is, you know, when you look at these numbers, there's this interesting, first of all, we recognize that it's categorical data because Spanish, French, Latin, and Mandarin are values of some categorical variable, which would be language or world language class taken or world language course taken or something like that. One interesting thing you know is I listed them in this order from kind of biggest to smallest. But the order is totally arbitrary. I could have listed French first. I could have listed Latin first. There's no logical reason why I put those four languages in that order. Okay? Um, this actually has a name. It's called a frequency table. So let me kind of just check this off the list. You're going to hear this term frequency a lot in this course. Frequency just means a number of things, a count of things. So when you look at this, this actually is a frequency table. It's telling us that 11 students took Spanish. 11 is a frequency, right? Five students took French. Five is a frequency. So one very common way to represent categorical data is with something like this called a frequency table. Ooh. Um, again, kind of think about this uh, that term I looked at the last time, which is the term distribution, which just means what values does a variable take and how often it takes them. So in this case, you'd say, well, 11 students take Spanish. That means Spanish is the most popular language among these 24 students. Can't generalize that to anything else beyond those 24 students. And then it looks like French, Latin, and Mandarin, less popular than Spanish, and all kind of roughly the same number of students. So if you see, if you see the term frequency table, that's literally all it is. And I wrote it here with colons, but you can also make it in a little grid or something like that. Uh, frequency just means number of counts. I want to talk about a similar term, which is the term relative frequency. And in this class, frequency means counts, numbers of individuals, and relative frequency means percent. So let me ask, so this is a frequency table. Mm -hmm. Let me now give you a relative frequency table. I'm going to list the same languages, Spanish, French, Latin. I'm doing the same order for really for no reason, and Mandarin. But now, I'm going to list them not as frequencies, but as relative frequencies, which means as percents. And I've done the division here. This is roughly 48.3%. Uh, French is 20.3%. And the other one is 16.7%. And this, you know, where, how did I get that 48.3? Literally, it's just 11 divided by 24, which is the total, and did it all the way down. So this is a relative frequency table. Okay? And what you're really getting there is that the term frequency means counts. The term relative frequency just means percents. I wrote them here as percents rounded to one decimal place. We'll kind of be very fast and loose with both the number of decimal places. So you know, technically, it's 48.333. Um, and also, some, I will see it a lot where we'll write it as 0.483, where we'll write the percents as decimals. Don't worry about that too much. Okay, great. So the next thing I want to talk about is something called the bar graph. Okay, and you've all seen bar graphs before, so let me see if I can just turn this frequency table into a bar graph. So the way we make a bar graph, no big surprise here, is I draw a little x, y axis. In this class, you always want to label your axes. Let me make this bar a little, a little bit bigger here. 
So this is down here is going to be language. It's important you give each, and then over here we're going to write frequency. By the way, frequency, you could have also just written numbers of people, because that's really all it is. I'm just going to do here, I'm just going to abbreviate a little bit Spanish, French, Latin, Mandarin. I'll do some sort of little scale here, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 12, 10, 8, 6, 4, 2, put a zero there. And then let me just kind of make some bars. There's the Spanish bar, okay, here's the French bar. And then both of these bars are kind of looking the same. So that's a bar graph, okay? Um, again, the order of those bars really doesn't matter. A bar, bar graph is just a way to represent a frequency table. Um, and it does give us a little bit of a kind of this tells us about the distribution because, oh, look, the Spanish bar is the tallest. Isn't kind of somewhat interesting? And, oh, look, the French, Latin, and Mandarin bars are all roughly the same, all right? Um, so that's a bar graph. And again, the order of those bars couldn't matter. Important thing, make sure you always give a label to the x and y axis. x axis in this case is language, y axis is frequency, but it could also just be number of people. So that's a bar graph, okay? Let me talk to you about, I've kind of written a relative frequency bar graph here. Let me just kind of see if I can um, convince you uh, how to do a relative frequency bar graph. And again, relative frequency means percents. So all I have to do here to turn this bar graph into a relative frequency bar graph is change the scale on the y-axis to percent. And then I'm going to change these numbers. This is kind of 0.5, and I'll just kind of leave the other ones. That's kind of roughly what they were. Um, but this is now a relative frequency bar graph. The only difference between a bar graph and a relative frequency bar graph is in a regular bar graph, the units on the y-axis are counts or frequency. And for a relative frequency bar graph, the units on the y-axis are percent. It's the only difference, right? The shape of the bars is still the same, and actually kind of the way you would interpret it is also the same. Um, last thing, I'm going to move this over here. For, I don't know why I put it, whatever, let's put it right there. Um, last thing I want to talk about is a pie chart. Okay, and again, I think most of you have seen a pie chart before. I'm not going to spend too much time on this. You draw a nice big circle. There's your pie. And then the idea is you want to make some wedges that correspond to these relative frequencies. So I'm just going to do 48.3% is a little bit less. 50, so maybe like this, that's Spanish. French is about 20%. I'll kind of do, okay, maybe like to there. That's French. And then I'll split this in two. Hopefully that looks a little bit smaller. I think it does. Latin and Mandarin. And then I'll just kind of label this as language. Really, it's language taken by the 24 students in the class. So that's a pie chart, okay? I kind of glossed over. I just kind of eyeballed it. But of course, in the real world, how would you figure out how many degrees this is? Well, you would go... Okay, Spanish is 11 24ths, which is 48.3% times the number of degrees, which is 360. And that would tell you exactly kind of how many degrees it would be, and you'd do the math otherwise for that. Okay, the advantage of a pie chart is kind of like some, some people find pie charts easier to look at than bar graphs. They all do a relatively good job of representing the categorical data visually, right? So these are four ways that we can talk about. Look, here's your, fre here's your frequency table. Here's your relative frequency table. This is a bar graph. Technically, it's a relative frequency bar graph. And then there's your pie chart, okay? Um, the other thing I, so that's, we're, we're gonna save these three uh, for the next video. And actually, because they get a little bit more complicated. The last thing that is in section 1.1 that I just want to briefly mention is I made some very simple graphs down here. The goal of a graph is to give us a good idea of visually displaying the distribution. There is a whole topic that we will kind of talk about, which is the idea of good graphs and bad graphs. And the goal of a good graph, it should kind of honestly display what it is. Um, how could I turn this into a bad graph? Well, one kind of obvious way to turn it into a bad graph is to change the scale. So actually, let's say I did a regular bar graph down here, okay? And notice I've started this at zero. What if I started like down here at like three? Well, then actually it might kind of look like this. I'll just kind of go like this. Five, can you see that? I think you can, yeah, five, seven, nine, 11. And what you would see then is the Spanish bar is there, all right? There's the French bar, and then there are the other two bars. Let me just go Spanish, French, language, Mandarin. This is still language, and this is frequency. I would say this is a bad graph. Can you see that down there? 
Okay, why is this a bad graph? Because it sure looks in this case like the Spanish bar is so much taller like than the Latin bar or the Mandarin bar, like eight times taller, right? Okay. But this is kind of not honest, right? Um, one way to, we will always start our y-axis at zero because this essentially tricks the user into looking at this at, as the bars are actually not honest representations of the distribution. So I would call this a bad graph. Don't do this, okay? Okay, another thing that actually kind of falls into the bad graph court category, and sometimes you'll see this like software can do this, or you'll see it in some magazine, is where they kind of add other things to the picture to kind of just confuse things. Like I've actually seen graphs where it's like, oh, let's put a big like sombrero on top of Spanish, right? And maybe give like the French one like a beret, right? And I don't know, uh, maybe Latin's kind of like wearing a toga or something like that, you know, or like something like that, I don't know, to right? Um, or in, and maybe over here like in the... Uh, the pie chart, there's like, you know, they kind of made it look like a slice of pie for Latin or like, you know, they added little stars or fireworks. Okay, don't do that, right? The goal of a graph is just to represent the data honestly, okay? In your textbook, they have an example where actually like the, the Spanish one, they've got like a picture of something and those things can just kind of fool the eye. The, the goal of a graph should just be to honestly represent the data, right? So two different ways I want you to know to make a bad graph. Don't start your axis at anything but zero. Zero is kind of the only honest thing. And then also don't do anything else besides represent the data, right? By adding, adding pictures or kind of other crazy things kind of makes it, makes it fall into the category of a bad graph. Right? That was the first half of section 1.1. And in the next video, we're going to finish up section 1.1 by talking about these things down here and a few more other topics. Thanks, gang.